Hi everyone, this is Nitin Choda and welcome to this special video training on the Obamacare economy and how one simple suggestion I gave one of my mastermind clients has them on track to increase their revenue by as much as $85,000 in the next 12 months. Now, a lot of articles, a lot of videos, a lot of content, a lot of different opinions are available about Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act. And I, before we start, I want you to know that this video training is about the objective economic realities of Obamacare. It's not about my political opinions or my philosoph philosophical opinions or, or, you know, it's not about us arguing about that because, you know, then we could we could talk about that and we could comment on that for weeks, months, and uh, we might never come to a conclusion. But this is about the objective economic realities of what Obamacare is going to is going to cause for for physicians, for clinicians like physical therapists, as well as for patients. So let's examine some of those things. And then we'll examine what we need to do as clinicians, as private practice owners, to stay ahead in the Obamacare economy and if possible to thrive in what is essentially a new world of healthcare that uh, we now find ourselves in, in 2013 and 2014. So the first thing to understand for physicians, all types of physicians, whether it's primary care physicians, uh, whether it's specialists, physicians will be subjected to more government regulation and oversight. In fact, a lot of studies have shown that physicians are actually considering early retirement because they anticipate being paid less uh, with Obamacare. They anticipate a flood of new patients. In fact, the um, the United States needs almost 92,000 physicians in the next few years up to 2020 just to be able to keep up with demand. And a lot of physicians are not only considering early retirement, but they're also suggesting to their family members that they don't get into uh, medicine. So, you know, a lot of things are happening and this is one of them. Now, the new realities are that Medicaid has now been expanded under Obamacare. So for states that are willing to, to do this, um, Medicaid will be expanded and a lot of, uh, a lot of individuals who are above, just barely above the poverty line, up to 138% above the poverty line are going to be eligible for Medicaid. Now this means that there'll be a lot more Medicaid patients, millions of Medicaid patients joining the US healthcare system and not enough doctors to care for them because the fact is physicians are already dissatisfied with a lot of things that are going on with Obamacare. In fact, um, Medicaid patients are already experiencing uh, overcrowding, reduced access to care because it's hard for them to find, I'm talking about Medicaid, Medicaid patients are already experiencing reduced access to care and are already finding it difficult uh, with with overcrowding and they're finding it difficult to find physicians who'll accept Medicaid. Now, on top of that, we have the IPAB, which is the Independent Payment Advisory Board, which is a 15-member panel. Uh, these are non-elected individuals. These are individuals assigned, uh, determined by the federal government. These individuals will determine whether certain treatments are are efficient or effective based on price. And, you know, based on, of course, effectiveness, and they are actually going to make recommendations about how certain conditions sh should actually be treated. So all this is happening. These are some of the new realities of Obamacare. Now, basically, the federal government, as you may or may not know, is uh, needs money. There's a $17 trillion deficit. Now, the, the you know, trillion, there are several zeros in trillion. It's actually 12 zeros. And the government basically is in a $17 trillion deficit. In fact, the projected deficit is an additional trillion dollars every year. That's trillion, 12 zeros in the trillion. So the only way the government can really stay one step ahead is to increase income through a combination of penalties, taxes, and fees, which is basically what Obamacare or the Affordable Health Care Act uh, does to the average American. And of course, the government needs to, like I said, reduce expenses as well. I'll get to the reduced expenses in just a second. How do they increase income? Here's just a here's just a quick summary of how Obamacare will increase income for the federal government. Now, the anticipation is that uh, this will raise $771 billion, that's billion with a B, 
uh, up to the year 2022. And as you can see, there's a combination of penalties, taxes, and fees that impact the average American, that impact uh, some small businesses, main, you know, a lot of larger businesses. And you can examine this in greater detail. Uh, a lot of resources are available online. Now, how do they decrease expenses? The biggest way to decrease expenses uh, for the government as far as Medicare is concerned is quite simply to reduce reimbursement, to reduce Medicare reimbursement. Now, if the government reduces Medicare reimbursement, which they've already done because, I, because since the 1st of April 2013, there has already been a 50% impact, a multiple procedure payment reduction impact. So if you look at your EOB or your ERA from Medicare for a claim before the 1st of April, and if you look at your EOB or ERA uh, for, a, for the exact same type of claim, for the exact same claim, after the 1st of April, you'll see that you're getting paid less. There's actually a 50% reduction in the practice expense component of the RVU, the relative value unit. The bottom line is, since the 1st of April, uh, you have been, you have been, you have been being, you have been paid less by Medicare. Sorry, I got myself into a word jumble there. The, the the reimbursement from Medicare has decreased effective the 1st of April 2013 and it may actually continue to decrease because one of the objectives of the Congressional Budget Office along with the Division of Taxation is to save $716 billion between now and 2022. And the physician fee schedule has already seen an impact. It may see a continued impact. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is that physicians will get paid less for Medicare patients. They might actually stop accepting Medicare patients. In fact, there's going to be a direct impact for patients. There's going to be overcrowding because patients may find that, you know, not enough physicians are accepting Medicare, which will result in an overcrowding as far as Medicare patients are concerned with certain physicians, with certain hospitals that do accept Medicare. And now I'm talking Medicare, not just Medicaid, I'm talking Medicare. There could be a reduced access to care because of physician dissatisfaction and physicians actually dropping out of Medicare plans. And there will most certainly be higher co-pays and deductibles because now when patients are paying lower premiums, which is the objective of Obamacare to make healthcare affordable, the co-pays and the deductibles are going to be higher across the board. Gone are the days of $10, $15, $20 co-pays. The co-pays are now significantly higher and your patients... I mean, in the new Obamacare economy, you as a clinician will probably get more patients because more people have insurance. But because the co-pays and the deductibles are higher, you may actually find that patients are coming less often for your services. And I'm going to address that in just a few minutes. So with all this being said, the Medicare trustees project has stated that if all these cuts go into effect, 15% of Medicare Part A providers such as hospitals, skilled nursing facilities and hospices would become unprofitable and likely stop seeing Medicare patients by 2019 with this percentage increasing to about 25% in 2030 and 40% by 2050. So I know all of this sounds like it's, you know, it's bad news, it's concerning to you, but there is good news with Obamacare. Uh, Medicare patients will save on prescription medication. This will close the donut hole, which requires uh, which requires Medicare patients to pay out of pocket for certain medications. So they will save on prescription medication. Phys uh, patients will save on wellness visits. The exact Medicare policy towards wellness is going to be defined on the on or around the first of January two thousand fourteen. So we'll keep our eyes and ears open for that. And you'll be notified on uh, on this YouTube channel and on this blog. Uh, and again, the good news is preventive services like vaccines, flu shots, cancer screenings and annual checkups will indeed be free for the most part under Obamacare. So all of that is in fact good news, you know, so it's not, it's not all bad. You know, there is some good news. So at the end of the day, there's an impact on physicians, there's an impact on patients and finally, there's an impact on physical therapists. So what do you do if you're a physical therapist or for that matter, a rehab professional, um, maybe even a mental health professional or a speech therapist? First of all, you need to have a multidisciplinary practice. You cannot have a one-dimensional practice. You have to be able to provide more services than just your core offering. 
you should be able to diversify. For example, if you're a physical therapy private practice, consider offering some sort of fitness classes, some massage classes, some wellness classes, some Tai Chi classes, perhaps even some weight loss classes. So start to think in terms of diversifying so that you can increase the average patient value. Increasing the average patient value is going to be the only way you can survive and grow in the Obamacare economy. In addition to this, you should be able to explore new ways to serve patients. These new ways have to essentially combine your interest, your expertise, and your market potential. What, what's out there? Now, if you really think about it, you should be getting 20% of your income from non-traditional re revenue sources, at least two additional revenue sources. So you need to be able to diversify your practice. Like I said earlier, you can consider fitness, weight loss. You have options like yoga, pilates, prenatal, postnatal, athletic training, injury prevention, whatever is a match between your interest, expertise, and your market potential, that is something you need to be able to consider seriously. Now, I was on the phone with one of my mastermind coaching clients, and I was able to, within 10 minutes, show her how she would be able to increase her revenue by as much as $85,000 in the next 12 months, and here's how. Well, it's a given that you need to be able to increase referrals in your practice, and if you need more information about how to increase referrals, you can join our referral ignition training program. You can get more information at referralignition.com. But here's some simple math. This particular client was seeing about 50 visits a week and was making an average of $83 a visit. She's a one-man physical therapy. She's, she's a one-man show. So she sees patients and she sees 50 a week and she makes $83. That's her average reimbursement per visit. Now, for this particular client, we did some math and here's what we determined. If using a combination of the referral ignition principles, which we've done for hundreds of clients across the country, we were able to increase her referrals from 50 visits to 70 visits a week. The math makes sense. So with the current caseload, she's at 50 patients a week at $82 a visit. If she increased her visits, if you look at point three, from 50 a week to 70 a week, then her total increased number of visits in uh, 52 weeks would be that's you know 20 times a week multiplied by uh, 52 weeks which is basically 1040 visits as you can see in point four now if she was to hire an aide for ten dollars an hour at uh, 10 hours a week the total cost of the aid point two would be five thousand two hundred dollars so she would actually bring in eighty five thousand two hundred and eighty dollars because she'd be seeing an extra 20 visits a week over 52 weeks so that's, as you can see in point four, 10, uh, 1,040 visits. And if she was to multiply 1,040 by $82 a visit, that gives us a grand total on point five of $85,280. So if you really think about the math here, you subtract the cost of the actual aid in point two. So you take point five, 85,280, and you subtract $5,200 in point two, which is the cost of the aid, you get an increase in your annual income by $85,000. And this is basically income that drops straight to your bottom line because your only additional cost here is the cost of the aid, perhaps some other miscellaneous expenses. But I'm, I'm, I think you can get my point here. So basically, you know, when you're trying to make money in a, as a private practice owner, you have to remember that you have to be able to either increase referrals or diversify your income. You've got to do either one, preferably both. The advantage with increasing referrals, and like I said, you can get more information at referralignition.com. We use a combination of software technologies like therapynewsletter.com, intouchemr.com, where we have uh, a phenomenal EMR system, intouchbillerpro.com, which is the industry's number one billing software combined with the clearing house. And we use a combination of software, coaching, where we work with you closely, as well as systems like the referral ignition done for you marketing training program with done for you templates. Everything from done for you letters and emails and PowerPoint presentations and brochures to done for you mechanisms, done for you sequences you can use to increase referrals in your practice. So using a combination of all of these, you're actually able to increase your referrals and any additional referrals, any additional visits, for the most part, 
drops straight to your bottom line because all the initial income you make, a significant portion of it, as you probably know, if you're a one-man show, goes towards your expenses, your lease, your your miscellaneous expenses, your your utilities and things like that. But when you when you get more referrals and when you're able to hire Obviously, physical therapists are more expensive to hire than aides. But in this situation, if one clinic, a one-man show was to hire an aide and go from 50 to 70, you could, with the help of the aide, see more patients, maintain quality of care, and then increase revenue. Obviously, as you get more and more patients, you can get a licensed physical therapist, which, and then the physical therapist can get assistance from an aide or from a PT assistant and then continue to increase that way. But the numbers... You know, numbers don't lie. These numbers make sense. And I hope you've gotten some good ideas from this video training. I wish you all the best. And I hope that we can stay one step ahead in the Obamacare economy with a combination of increasing referrals, which you can do with a combination of systems, people, software, and tools, and by diversifying, which you can do after you take into consideration your income your expertise and your market potential. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video training. Bye-bye.